Right, 10 healthy fitness habits I wish I knew five years ago. Number one, eat your frogs in the morning. Have you heard of this saying before? If you are not looking forward to something, if there's something that physiologically causes you anxiety, just thinking about the fact that you're gonna to have to do it the next day, if you're procrastinating about it, bite the bullet, rip the plaster off and do it first thing in the morning. I love training, as you probably know, but I still do all my training in the morning. I do lack the motivation to think about the fact that I have to go to the gym, work out an hour and a half and go home and then start my day with all those other tasks that I have to do. I find that working out first thing in the morning is the best solution for me. And I wish I'd known that because there are so many times that I pushed through in my younger years during lunch or the evening when I'd eaten quite a lot and felt heavy and my workouts never felt that good. Two, make sure you're getting adequate sleep. I don't tend to work out in the evenings and I've learned that the hard way, I wish I'd known five years ago, is because the exercise induces a uh, an increase in adrenaline and that adrenaline stays in my system for quite a few hours. If I'm working out in the evening, I don't want to be going to bed with that adrenaline because it inhibits me from settling back down and being able to relax enough and drop my heart rate enough to fall asleep. Number three, five years ago when I was super youthful and still in my 20s, ah, I was not wearing sun cream every day on my face. I wouldn't use sun cream back in the UK, in the cold, rainy UK, awful weather at the moment, by the way, um, because it just wasn't a habit that I had. However, now entering my 30s, I have started wearing sun cream on my face because not only does it prevent harmful UV rays penetrating my skin, but also it's now pretty well known that it could uh, prevent wrinkles, or at least slow down the appearance of wrinkles on my face. I personally, um, also get things like these um, marks on my face. I, I wouldn't call them freckles. They're a bit deeper than freckles and they're more than beauty marks. I'd say they're almost um, stains on the face. And even though my tan decreases, the freckles or whatever you want to call them will increase on my skin. And I personally don't like that look on me. I don't think it suits me. But that aside, I also don't want to get skin cancer. So wear your sun cream. Start now, start now if you're in your 20s or in your teens watching this. I'm telling you this as you from the future in your 30s. Number four, take your data from your wearables with a pinch of salt. One of the biggest coagulations of data that we use our wearables for is to track our sleep. And I personally have maybe a controversial view on this, but I don't think that that is super healthy. There are various studies to tell us that what we feel, our mindset, really affects our physiology. So if we feel that we have not slept well, we will carry out our tasks throughout that day as if we have had minimal sleep. But having felt that we've had a very deep sleep that enables us to feel good the next day, if we then were to look at our fitness tracker and it says that we've had very poor quality sleep or not enough of it, we can then almost as a placebo effect and will supersede that initial feeling we had that we had adequate sleep. And therefore, again, our physiology reflects how we feel and we will go throughout our day as if we've had bad sleep. I think as humans, we've evolved over many, many years to be able to depend on how we feel in terms of um, how good we feel according to how much we've slept or how we recovered we feel after a few days of workout. And these wearables that perhaps should be marketed specifically to niche sets of people like athletes instead are now being marketed to everyone and anyone as if everyone should wear a wearable it's just like having a phone and the truth is that with the increase of people wearing wearables there are less incentives for us to really listen to our body and what it's telling us because we're relying on an independent tracker and data that is recording our stats without any nuance and any understanding the whole homeostatic cycle of how we work as a human. We're outsourcing our own kind of gut feeling and what we feel inside to a wearable. Now you may say, but Jade, you have a Fitbit on your arm. And that's true. However, I use the Fitbit to track my step count. I find this super interesting. I've done a lot of my challenges on step count. And if I was to count, I, would not be doing anything else in the day because every time I moved my feet I'd have to count that as a step and so what that does is it enables me to track a numerical value that I otherwise would not be able to do unless that's all I dedicated my day to 
and that's why I use a Fitbit because I feel a similar phenomenon is happening to um, to women when they're looking at their menstrual um, cycle trackers and apps. Again, I have the Flow app and I use this sometimes when I feel like opening it to see where I am in my cycle. But I understand again to take it with a pinch of salt. Number five do exercises that supplement the hypertrophy and increase in muscle mass that you're experiencing when you get stronger doing these moves. What I mean by that is our muscles, we can visibly see as we get stronger. I might do a little flex. Oh, I just can't help myself, can I? <laughs> um, so we visibly get stronger as we work out and I can see that, you know, I don't really have a pump at the moment, but you know what I mean. And it's really important that we also do exercises that are supplementary to ensure that our ligaments and our tendons are keeping up with the hypertrophy and increasing uh, muscle mass and strength that our muscles are experiencing. Otherwise, we are more prone to injury and I am the queen of injury. <laughs> so I wish I'd known this when I was younger. Number six, fitness does not need to be expensive. I would spend excessive amounts of money on the correct clothing, like this Gymshark top, I bought this years ago, and accessory pieces and I learned most of my skills and gained most strength when I practiced during lockdown and COVID times in the calisthenics parks in my local park for free. For free. I got advice from really nice people who were working out. I get advice from you guys even now, sometimes in the comments um, to do with my exercises. It was all free. And I think it's really important to preserve these um, free spaces that we have in our society today. Because at the moment, I can only think of two places that are really free, where you don't have to buy a drink or, um, spend a little bit of money just to be be in the place um, and that is calisthenics parks and public libraries it dissolves our effort to create a community and it also um, enforces this elitism that we've seen in our society with the disparity between rich and poor like when I was doing pull-ups in the calisthenics park I remember one day thinking oh wow this is a really surreal experience I was sharing the bar with a high-flying lawyer who had a few minutes between each client in his like main suit and also a guy that unfortunately had found himself to be um, homeless and I was doing pull-ups with both of them and the three of us were having a conversation and I thought to myself when would that ever happen in today's society? Number seven, one bad, one binge, one day where you ate a little bit excessively is not going to sabotage your diet and your gains. From a young age, I was a little bit overweight as a child and I've always had a massive appetite. Um, you can watch my previous YouTube videos to confirm that. And I still do have a really big appetite, but what it means is I have to pay particular attention to not over consume foods. And I have an all or nothing mentality, which is great in some instances, but not when it comes to food. And I'm still working on this. At the moment, I'm trying to be more mindful in what I eat. I've always been an intuitive eater, but sometimes when I'm watching a series on TV or I'm at a social occasion, I don't realize how many calories I've consumed and I end up eating not because I'm hungry, but just because food is yummy. And once I've done this, I find it really hard to jump back on the bandwagon. Once I'm off, my brain's like, well, what's the point? Yesterday was a bad day and today as well might be a bad day. I'm really trying to work on myself to also understand that this doesn't make the whole of me. Um, you don't have to restrict your calories or be mindful of what you're eating. However, if you personally want to lose a few pounds, then it's just really important to remember that we're all human. We're all going to have days where we have low motivation, low willpower, and these things happen. And just to remember that it doesn't remove all the hard work, that you can get up again. I'm telling this to myself as well, that you can get up again and keep going. Number eight, be aware of effort. We live in a society today that is overwhelmed by the increases in technology. A lot of us spend lots of hours on social media, listening to podcasts from successful people or people we would like to emulate, and we only see the tip of the iceberg. I think it's really important for us to remember that with that success came a lot of sacrifices. It's like Thomas Sowell says, there are no solutions, only trade-offs. So if you want to get to one place, be prepared to sacrifice something else. And that's something that I wasn't aware of. We have an instant gratification society where we press three buttons and we can get food from Deliveroo delivered to our house, or we can order a book from Amazon and suddenly something can be shipped from China and delivered to our door the next day. When you're living in a minimal effort society, fitness is one of the few things in our everyday society which requires effort to gain the specific body you would like or the skills that you would like to ascertain. 
You may argue that rich people can use plastic surgery, but even I don't think that that's a good substitute because you can see when someone's had plastic surgery to have like fake abs on, right? So because we don't have many things left in our society that require effort, that require a bit of friction in life, we have very high dopamine now for very little effort. It creates a skew in your mind and you're less likely to put effort into things that need the effort for you to get. Number nine, sticking to the basics will work. So in calisthenics, the basics means things like pull-ups, dips, push-ups. Again, going back to uh, Thomas Sowell's famous quote, we have replaced what worked with what sounds good. When I think of that quote, I often think about these clickbaity titles that you see on YouTube, like get abs in five minutes. The intentions there are for the creator of the video to get most clicks for people to view their video and therefore generate more money for them. And when that intention to get money supersedes the truth and the unsexy reality that to gain something you need to put effort into it, I think that that's bad for society. So yeah, stick to the basics. Number 10, you don't need a workout routine to be fit. I said it. Until recently, I had never had a workout routine, I just played but I felt that to progress, I would need a workout routine. And the thing is, perfect is the enemy of good. Some days you may wake up and just feel like having a little dance in the kitchen to your favorite song, and that is movement. And you may go to the gym sometimes and not feel like doing what you were going to do, but playing about perhaps in another gym machine or hanging off a bar. If you are keeping consistent with your workouts and um, you enjoy what you're doing, that has more longevity for the future, and means that you will stick to it better. So you don't have to have a routine necessarily. I didn't have a legitimate workout routine for many years and I managed to garner the strength that I have now through play, through enjoying my movement. Okay, lovely people, I hope you've enjoyed that video. Uh, please drop me a little like and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll catch you next one. Ciao.